All right, so in section 2.1, we're going to talk about organizing qualitative data. Um, so hopefully you remember from chapter 1 that quantitative data is dealing with numbers, and qualitative data um, is going to be the type of data that's also known as categorical data. Um, so this is going to be stuff where we can't take the average or things like that because we're going to have things like body parts or colors. Um, again, things that uh, are putting, we, that you can categorize, um, but that you cannot treat the same as quantitative data. So the first thing we want to look at is a frequency distribution. So frequency distribution lists each category of data and the number of occurrences for each category of data. So this is going to be really close to raw data. So here uh, we have the information of what body parts were worked on uh, by a chiropractor during the course of a day. So this here is our raw data where literally the chiropractor has written down the body part. Um, and then we can go through and we can start to make our frequency distribution. So for the frequency distribution, we're going to write down all the body parts. So those are our categories and then we're just going to tally up. So we're just going to go through and literally just count how many there are. Typically, the easiest way to do this is to go through the data and make a tally mark um, in the appropriate category. So for back, you would end up putting a tally here for back. You go to wrist. Next, so we would go to wrist and do a tally. Uh, elbow, we would give a tally. Uh, and then we go to back again, so another one, so on and so forth. And then once we've gone through all the data and tallied it all up, we're just going to count. And that's going to be our frequency. Now, the relative frequency is the proportion or the percent, um, but it's going to be written as a proportion or meaning as a decimal um, most of the time. Um, also a fraction, but again, but not typically written as a percent for us. Um, so it's the proportion of observations within a category, and it's found using the formula where it's the frequency of that uh, occurrence over the sum of all frequencies. So. For instance, up here, we would take, uh, to find the relative frequency of back, we would take this 12 and we'd divide by all of the body parts that were recorded. So they've got that worked out here. So we've taken the back, that 12, and we're dividing by the 30 different pieces of data that we had uh, recorded. So we're going to have 0.4 uh, for wrist. We're going to take that 2 and divide by, again, that 30 pieces of data that were recorded. We're going to get our 0 .0667, so 0 .06 repeating. Um, and as far as how we want this relative frequency to look, to look, as far as decimal or fraction, it's kind of going to depend on the different problem as well as the instructions. Typically, though, we will have it written as a decimal. All right, so again, frequency distribution is where we are categorizing data and then just saying how many times something occurred in that category. And the relative frequency is going to be the proportion. So that's where we're going to have it written as a decimal um, or perhaps a percent or fraction. So a relative frequency distribution is going to list each category of data together with its relative frequency. So again, the relative frequency is going to be just that proportion, and a relative frequency distribution is going to be the category with um, that relative frequency. All right, so let's go through and do a quick demonstration of a frequency distribution and relative frequency distribution with birthdays. So if we were to go through and figure out how many people have birthdays in each of the 12 months. So I'm going to quickly just make up some numbers. So let's say that we have one person born in January, uh, two people in February, maybe two people in March, three people born in April, two people born in May, one born in June, none born in July, two born in August, 
two born in September, and then maybe one in October, two in November, and two in December. So let's pretend that this here is our actual data from a class, and this should total up to 20. Let's see really quickly. Yes, so this does total up to 20. So that means that our relative frequency is going to be 1 over 20 or 0 0.05. Uh, 2 over 20, which is going to give us 0 0.1 for February. For March, again, 2 over 20. So that's 0 0.1. For April, that's 3 out of 20. It's going to give us 0 0.15. For May, the 2 out of 20, again, it's going to be that 0 0.1. For June, that 1 out of 20 is going to be 0 0.05. July, obviously 0 out of 20 is going to give us just 0. For August, that 2 out of 20 is going to be 0 0.1. September, the same thing, so 0 0.1. Make that other 0 0.1 look a little nicer. So 0 0.1. For October, 1 out of 20, so 0 0.05. And November and December, that 2 out of 20 is going to be 0 0.1. So, Looking at the birth month with this first column will be our frequency distribution. Looking at the birth month with the relative frequency will be a relative frequency distribution. And again, it's a relative frequency distribution because we are including the relative frequency with the categories. So we're going to leave this alone for just a minute, but we're going to come back to this data in a little bit. Okay, let's talk about bar graphs. So a bar graph is constructed by labeling each category of data on a horizontal axis and the frequency or relative frequency of the category on the vertical axis. Uh, rectangles are equal width or drawn for each category. The height of each rectangle is the category's frequency or relative frequency. So the example that we had previously with the chiropractor and the different body parts, uh, whenever we went through, if we were to go through and do a frequency bar graph, we would just have all of our categories listed, and we would be going through and marking uh, however many times each of these occurred. So there were 12 uh, backs that were worked on, two wrists, uh, one elbow, so on and so forth. So here is our frequency distribution. Over here is the relative frequency distribution. So notice it's no longer 12, it's going to be at 0.4 for back because that was 12 out of the 30. Um, please note, these have the same shape. The only thing that's really changed is the numbers over here. So instead of frequency, now it's going to be the relative frequency. So instead of however many pieces of raw data we counted, we're now looking at it as a proportion over here. All right, so these are both just bar graphs. And then there's a special bar graph that's called a Pareto. So a Pareto chart is a bar graph whose bars are drawn in descending order of frequency or relative frequency. So this kind of lets you find information a little bit faster maybe. Um, and again, descending is important. So you're starting with whatever occurs the most and then working your way down. Um, and this will allow you to quickly figure out uh, what was done, again, the most, what happened the most, occurred the most, and the least, so on and so forth. All right, so let's talk about the information of the birthdays. All right, so to create the bar graph, um, we need to go through, and we'll just do our frequencies first. So in January, we said that there was one, uh, one January birthday. In February, we had two. In March, we also had two. In 
April we had three. In May we had two. So in May we had two and in June we had one. So May and June. And let's get to July and August really quickly. So July we had zero. August we had two. September we had two. So July we had none. August we had two. And September we had two. And let's look at October, November, and December right quick. So we had one for October, two for November, and two for December. So one, two, and two. All right. So we've gone through and worked out um, our bar graph that's showing the frequency because we have the zero through four over here. Uh, now let's do the a relative frequency bar graph. So to do that, I'm going to select all of this. And I'm going to actually just go on a new page. That'll be a little easier. And instead of having the zero, the one, two, three, and four, we're going to change those numbers to be the relative frequencies. So it's no longer a one. So whenever we had one, that was a relative frequency of 0 0.05. Whenever something, whenever we had two, that was a relative frequency of 0 0.1. Three was 0 0.15, and we didn't have any that were four, but that would have been 0 0.2. So we can go through, and it's again the same shape. All we're having to do is change from the frequency to the proportion over here. All right, and then the last bit of instruction was to go through and create a Pareto chart. So again, remember that Pareto charts are gonna be in descending order. So we would have April first. So April would occur first. And I'm just going to kind of do a rough sketch of this. So we'd have April for April uh, coming first. And that had three. And I'm pretending this is a lot prettier than it is. All right, and then after April, so after that three, we're looking for all the ones with twos. So we would have February. Again with two. And then March with the two. May August. September, November, December. So this is going to be all the ones with two. And then we're going to go and list the months that only had one occurrence. 
So we have January. We're going to have June. October. And then the only month with none was July. So this will be our Pareto chart. So not overly interesting, um, but again, just the, the important part of having it in descending uh, frequency.